Welcome back to another video today we'll be listening to part 1 of what if Issei was almost killed by Rias Grimori don't forget to like share and subscribe for more now let's begin. Chapter 1. Why? In the old school building, near Kuo Academy, a large and Victorian looking room is currently being inhabited by a small group of high school students. Rias Grimori stands from her desk while pointing at a brown haired boy. She has a look of rage as her blue-green eyes begin to dilate into a glowing crimson fog, which radiates upward as if it were fire. Issei, who am I to you? Rias was now tapping her foot against her large desk, as her powers of destruction began to give off pressure and was felt by everyone in the room. Issei, who is standing on the opposite side of Rias's desk, shudders at the question. Is she acting out because of what I said to Ravel's mother? Is this a power move? Like maybe she wants me to remember who's in charge. So, an affirmation of her being my president, my master. Or, does she want me to call her by her name? Obviously, I love her, but I don't know. What if she laughs and demeans me for calling her anything other than, boss? What if I am just that, her pawn, her property? That could make things very awkward, if she really thinks of me like that. A red dragon emperor just another piece that makes her look good something like that if i do confess then she could use that against me later on after she rejects me i can imagine the mockery she might even kick me out i don't know what to do wait fuck it she has literally tried to rape me in the past so you know what i'm gonna do it raising his head from looking down at the floor while he was deep in thought Issei straightens his posture and then speaks with an emotionless face. Grimori-sama, may I please be granted the opportunity to ask you a question first. Rias looks into Issei's eyes and sees an empty void. They were warm brown, but the spark that was usually there, it was gone. Rias twitches a bit from this stare, but then nods slowly. Gritting his teeth, Issei manages to spit out, who am I, to, to, to you. The rest of the group in the room are now gasping except for a giggling Akino who has a hand over her own mouth. Ada Ada, so bold my little Issei. This is a new occurrence. Akino then looks back at her king, who looks to be in some sort of conflict with herself. Rias's eyes keep moving from a staring Issei, to each and every member of her peerage. Deciding that Issei needs to be the one to confess, Rias begins to lose it. What an arrogant brat, I've spoiled him far too much. He should worship the fucking ground I walk on. He is supposed to love me. Fine, maybe this will get my point across. Rias begins to daydream about a scenario in which she smacks Issei, very hard. This makes her feel good, as she now has a warm grin plastered to her face. However, reality hits her pretty hard as that grin fades into a frown, rather quickly. Aside from the screams of horror from individual peerage members, mainly Asia, Rias begins to remember the past few seconds in perfect clarity. Seen a few moments ago. Waiting for an answer from Rias, Issei continues to stare at his master with thoughts that run through his mind like a marathon runner. She looks really pissed. I bet she is going to tell me off. Then I will be ignored like usual. It will be followed up with a berating by the rest of my friends, surely. Well, at least I will finally know where I stand, where my place is. Oh, she is raising her hand and pointing it at me. Wait, why? Rias looked to be charging her power of destruction while pointing her hand at Issei. Akino was about to rush over toward Issei and force him down to avoid the blast, however she was late in her attempt. Charging at Issei, with both of her wings extended, Black Devil and Black Angel wings, Akino managed to tackle Issei to the ground in a tuck and roll. This was followed up by an explosion which destroyed the back of the club room. Heaving in and out, Akino had both of her hands on Issei's face as his hair draped over his eyes. Realizing that she felt something wet and warm on her right hand, Akino moves Issei's head closer to examine the situation. On the right temple of a now unconscious Issei, a large burn mark was now oozing blood. It seems as though the blast nearly grazed Issei, however it was enough to put him down. Akino screams, Issei, Asia, come here, please, fix him. I think he is dying. Running past the smoke from the explosion, Asia immediately kneels down and begins her healing magic. Kaneko was the third person to arrive as the other shortly followed, all surrounding Issei as he was covered by a green glow. Akino looks back up at Rias, 
who is still standing at her desk, while still holding her hand in the air, the same hand that produced and ejected a deadly blast of destruction toward her own palm. Akino scowls, what the fuck is wrong with you Rius? If he dies, I swear to whoever will listen, I will punish you. Kaneko was the next to speak as she punched both of her fists together, you won't be alone, Akino. Coming to realization of what she just did, Rius plopped back down into her chair with both of her hands over her head. Shaking her head back and forth, the king of the Grimori peerage seemed to be having a panic attack. Kiba has his hands on the shoulder of Ravel, don't worry, if anyone can help Issei, Asia can, she's the best of the best. Ravel looks up at Kiba and smiles, thanks for that. Kiba nods and looks over toward Rius while shaking his own head in disappointment. Xenobia and Irina are both standing over Issei as Asia prays while using her twilight healing. Akino then looks back at Issei, noticing he is not waking up. I think we need to contact Sirzex, she'll know what to do. Asia nods while continuing her healing, please call her, meanwhile, I will do everything I can to keep Issei alive. Nodding, Akino stands up, while Xenovia takes her place in holding Issei. Be right back, it's going to be alright, everyone, we will figure this out. Akino moves her eyes toward a sobbing Rius who has her head on her desk with her hands on top of her own head. Scowling, Akino adds, somehow. Akino leaves the room. Chapter 2. Not cool. Rius, not cool. Scene, Orc, Gasper's room. Grafia, it's very important, it's about Issei. We can see Akino, in a dark room, sitting on a large and canvassed bed, speaking through a communication circle which was red in color. The red circle glows a bit and then a voice replies, what happened to him, is he alright? Akino now screams into the circle, no, he is certainly not alright. I am not a doctor, but Issei is in bad shape, even with Asia using her twilight healing. Get Sirzex, now, the communication circle abruptly disappears which makes Akino even angrier. This was only a temporary moment of anger as a giant red seal began to glow from the floor not a few feet from her. After a burst of red light, we can see two figures. Akino bows, Sirzex Sama, thank you for coming. We see a white-haired woman wearing a maid's outfit, meanwhile, standing next to her, we see a tall and red-headed woman, wearing armor, which made her look like a much taller and stronger Rius. Where is he? Sirzex ran up to Akino and grabbed her shoulders. Akino nods and points toward the door. Meanwhile, in the main room, Asia is crying while attempting to use every bit of strength in order to keep Issei's heart beating. Xenovia is holding Issei tightly while glaring at a face-downed Rius, as she still has her hands over her head. Irina is on her knees while praying as tears escape her violet and puffy eyes. Ravel seems to have kneeled down next to Issei, wishing she had a phoenix tears, then a thought crossed her mind. She stands up and walks toward the corner of the room and sits down on one of the chairs as she folds her hands and looks down at the floor. Meanwhile, Kiba can be seen, kneeling and holding one of Issei's hands, the one that possessed the sacred gear. Dedrag, Dedrag, Red Dragon Emperor, please, are you there? Kiba seemed to be frantically and uncharacteristically, screaming at the bare arm. After a few moments of not hearing anything, Kiba starts to break down in tears as he holds Issei's limp and slightly cold hand. Mumbling to himself, as he looks down at his brother's hand, Kiba blurts out a few words. President, how could you? At that moment, the peerage hear footsteps approaching from the other room. Lo and behold, Sirzex, Grafia and Akino were present. Sirzex and Grafia both rush over toward Issei, as Grafia takes hold of Issei from Xenovia. Sirzex on the other hand, flares some of her power which caused the surrounding peerage to back away. Not even looking toward Rius, Sirzex has her full attention on Issei and Grafia. Grafia, what do you think? Holding Issei in her arms with a hand on Issei's head wound, she looks sadly back at her king. Sirzex Sama, this was an attack that could only be suffered from destruction magic. Before Grafia could finish, Sirzex stands up while flaring even more power. Slowly turning toward Rius, Sirzex moves a few strands of her long hair from her blue-green eyes while maintaining a stoic presence. Rius, care to explain what happened? Actually, that doesn't matter right now, what matters is Issei. Turning back around, looking down at Grafia, Sirzex smiles sadly. I'm sorry, Grafia, 
I cut you off, please, continue. Nodding, the maid looks back down at Issei. He will physically survive, however, I am not sure about his mind. I only say this because I feel a conflict of energies deep inside of him. In order to get more information, we would need a senjutsu master, someone who can both heal the mind and soul. Nodding, Sears X thinks to herself, well, destruction magic doesn't only destroy the physical, it also can destroy the soul. The problem with it lies in the instability of the magic itself. Therefore, it can be a challenge to assess the damage after such an attack, assuming the victim survives initially. Nodding to herself, Sears X then looks at each member of the peerage. She removes her cold and stoic gaze and replaces it with a warm and sisterly smile. Okay everyone, it's okay, Issei will be okay. So everyone come on over here, let's talk, I want to know exactly what happened. Akino then walks past a hunched over and silent Rias, who is still in the same position as before. Shaking her head, she continues over toward the rest of the group. Kaneko was the first to speak up once the group gathered round. I, I, I can try, I know a little senjutsu. Looking timid in front of her mouth, Kaneko simply kept her gaze on Issei with a frown. Shaking her head, Sears X then places a hand on the Neko's head. I know you want to help Issei, but I know that you are afraid of that power and because of that, you might not be able to control it, therefore possibly causing even more damage to our Dragon Emperor. No, I think it would be best if we sought professional help. For now, let's get Issei on that bed in the room we arrived in, after that, let's let him rest as we have a heart to heart in here. Meanwhile, Graphia, I need you to make some calls and find somebody who might be of use. Graphia nods and lifts Issei in a bridal style. She then walks the limp-bodied boy into the next room, shortly after, she walks out and shuts the door. Graphia then sits down on a chair that she places near the door while pulling her phone from her pocket. Sitting down on a couch, Sears X crosses her legs and takes a deep breath, well, who wants to fill me in on what happened? Scene, Gasper's room. Laying on the large bed, we can see a sleeping Issei Hyodo. Aside from his breathing, the boy was not moving as he just lay on his back with his head looking at the ceiling. His eyes are closed however we start to notice tears escaping his lashes. Deep inside of Issei's heart, we are able to visualize the events that are transpiring. Standing on a cliffside, Issei is leaning against a giant redwood tree. As he has his face in both of his hands, screams of anguish can be heard, which echoed through this large and unearthly forest. So that's what I am to her. I should have seen it. She's just like, just like, ah, just like, dot her. Standing not six feet away from Issei was no other than Rainier, dressed in her usually BDSM armor. She was leaning against another tree with her hands on her hips. A large and toothy grin was plastered to her pale face. Then, the apparition of Rainier speaks. Serves you right. Now you get to feel what I felt, when you let me die. I guess you wouldn't die for me. Too bad. The fallen angel starts to cackle and spit. You know how to pick them, Issei, you sure do. And you know the saddest part of all of this. Do you? I actually loved you. Oh, no, don't get me wrong, that wouldn't have stopped me from slowly breaking you piece by piece, until you finally died, oh no. But that doesn't mean that I didn't love you. Just like Rias. Yeah, maybe, just maybe she loved you. But, unlike me, well, the only difference is that she actually fucking killed you. Ha 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 ha. Issei is gripping his head and shaking his head, no. Chapter 3. Spirited Away. Scene, Orc, Main Room. Thank you, Kiba, for telling me what happened without allowing your emotions to take hold. Sears X now crosses her legs the other way while adjusting herself. Kiba, who is kneeling next to Sears X, simply nods and rises while sitting down next to Akino. We can see all of the girls in the peerage sobbing while sitting on couches and chairs. Sears X then looks toward the door in which her wife is guarding, well, let's just hope for the best. On a good note though, Sears X looks back at each member of the peerage, aside from her own sister, none of you seem to be hurt, so I will take any good news I can at this point. Turning her head now, toward her sister, Sears X face contorts into one of slight rage, but that changes quickly as she turns her head back toward the peerage. Well, I suppose it's a good time for everyone to get some rest. 
I will stay here with Graphia and, Rias, so please, you've all been through a lot, so. Sears X is interrupted as the little blonde phoenix rushes from her seat in the corner, now toward the Mao while grabbing onto one of her legs. Sears X Sama, here, use this, it will work. Holding a small teacup up toward Sears X face, Ravel looks to have very puppy eyes. Noticing what Ravel had just done, the red-headed super devil softly pats Ravel on the head, ruffling her drills. You really are a wonderful girl, aren't you, Ravel? Blushing Ravel motions with her arms again for Sears X to take the teacup. Acknowledging this action, Sears X takes the teacup and then stands, shortly after, bowing to Ravel. I really do wish your brother had the same sense of honor you have, my dear. Thank you for this. Blushing again, Ravel bows back, nodding. Sears X walks toward her wife and hands the teacup to her. Nodding, Graphia stands and proceeds to open the door. However, the sound of porcelain breaking grabbed everyone's attention which was followed up by a, where is he? Sears X, Issei is gone. Looking into the other, bedroom, on the large bed, all that could be seen was Issei's school uniform, neatly folded next to his pillow. Sears X was the one to enter the room next, first looking toward Graphia, then at the bed. What in all nine levels of hell just happened? Scene unknown place, inside of the mind of Issei Hyodo. Still standing, propped against the large redwood, Issei is now staring back at the phantom that is Rainier. He has a look of disgust and hatred as he spits out the following. I F, 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 fucking H, hate you. I hate you, I hate you, you used me, you broke me. I haven't been the same since you stabbed me. I haven't felt anything, not really, not since I was brought back. I thought by trying to rid my thoughts of, of, you, by delving into porn and breasts, I thought you would go away. But you never left, you never did. Every time I would lay with the girls, I always had this uneasy feeling, almost like I was going to be stabbed again, as soon as I let my guard down. I can't ever be truly at peace, not really. Then Rias, she, 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 does she not understand? Does she even care? A maniacally laughing Rainer interrupts Issei, of course she doesn't. And even if she did, she fucking killed you, not only that, she smiled while doing it. You remember that smile don't you? It was just like mine, wasn't it? Clutching his head again, Issei begins to scream once again. Aside from monstrous laughing from the apparition that was Rainer, Issei added a choir of screams and yells. Then, something happened, something warm, something soft, the feeling of a heartbeat, this was what Issei awakened to. Managing to sit upward, the brown-haired boy fell immediately into a fit of dizziness which caused him to lay back down. Looking to his left, he was able to get a better view of his surroundings. Rice paper walls and traditional Japanese artwork adorned the room. Realizing that he is resting on a traditional mat-style bed, Issei looks toward the small nightstand located a bit further toward his left. There was a glass of water and a napkin. Feeling incredibly thirsty, Issei reaches for the glass and slowly sips the liquid as he is still laying on his side, while not risking another dizzy spell. The water was cool and refreshing. Placing the glass cup back on the countertop, Issei decides to roll over and look at the other side of this large room. Looking down, as he doesn't want the bed sheets to constrain him, he realizes that what he was touching were not bed sheets. Wrapped around Issei was indeed not bed sheets, no, instead, giant and golden fox tails, yes tails as in more than one, were covering the boy's body from his toes all the way up toward his chest. On his back, Issei looks toward his right, only to see a very large pair of breasts, practically hanging out of a kimono. Fixated on the most beautiful opai Issei has yet to see, his nose begins to bleed. Immediately, the teen remembers the napkin and then reaches for it on the other side, only to stir the owner of these tails and, opai. Turning his head back toward the woman, Issei now looks up, only to see two beautiful and golden eyes, staring back at him. Good morning, Ada Ada, attempting to jump out of bed, Issei is forced back into his lying position as the fox tails tighten their hold. Don't be so shy, Ada Ada, I am a mother you know, I've seen everything. Realizing that he was able to feel this soft fur, all over his body, a truth became known. Issei was naked under these tails. Deciding that struggling was a bad idea, Issei calmed down and looked back at this very beautiful and blonde woman. 
she wore traditional Japanese attire. A kimono that had a yellow sash with black skulls on it was accompanied by an ornamental headpiece. The woman had small and box-shaped eyebrows, which suggests she had something to do with being a maiden or priestess of some sort. After getting a better look at his captor, Issei decided to speak up. Um, ma'am, who are you? The blonde woman squints her eyes and blushes. You may call me Yusaka, darling. And may I ask, what is your name, cutie? Chapter 4. Get some tail. Scene, Yusaka's castle, Kyoto, Japan. Looking at the woman in front of him, Issei begins to clutch his head in pain. It only lasted momentarily, however, the teen was able to feel a thick bandage, which was wrapped around his head. Looking back up at the woman, she seemed very concerned with what had just happened. But then, Issei focuses a bit on this woman. This, fox woman. Then it strikes him like lightning, however, he is interrupted by a sliding sound. The sliding rice paper door, slowly opens, which was on Yusaka's side of the room. Turning his attention toward the door, Issei squinted a bit, only to see somebody who was very familiar. Instantly, a golden dart of fluff makes its way toward the bed as the sliding door was still closing. Feeling more pressure around his body, Issei turns his head toward his left, only to see Kuno. She had her face pressed into her mother's tail which was still wrapped around Issei. The little girl started to cry while muffled in golden fur. Issei, who did this to you? I swear, mom and I will get them and make them pay. Hearing the muffled declaration, Issei puts on a warm yet sad smile. Placing his hand on the head of Kuno, he softly pats the little ears of this Japanese fox demon child. It's okay, it really is. Thank you for saving me, Kuno. Issei then turns his head, meeting the gorgeous and golden eyes of the ruler of Kyoto. Yusaka-sama, I'm so sorry, it just took me a minute to remember who you were. Please forgive me. Yusaka's smile turns into a mild grin as her eyes open a bit wider. Don't be so cordial, after all, you saved the life of my daughter, not to mention, well, you saved me too, Yusaka ended that last sentence with some sensual innuendos in mind, which Issei clearly could hear. A blushing Issei replies, and I would do it again, without question. Yusaka is now clapping in excitement, but then stops while placing a single hand over her mouth as she giggles. Ahem, well, declarations such as that, oh my, what am I to do with such sweet words, Sekiruti kun. Kuno then says something, mom, how long will it take, you know, for you to make the Opai dragon my new dad. Yusaka immediately begins to laugh very loudly and nervously as she continues to keep a hand over her mouth. Meanwhile, Issei can feel Yusaka's tails, tightening even more. Looking down toward Kuno, Issei replies, are you serious? Were the two of you talking about this before? Issei is interrupted as his body is forcefully moved over, closer toward Yusaka. Before Issei can get an answer from his captor's daughter, he is muffled in between the two things he loves best. The fox queen now folds both of her arms over Issei's shoulders, making sure as to not place any pressure toward his wound. Issei can hear a muffled noise coming from Yusaka, however all he can hear is the deep bass of what she is saying, thus he can't quite understand. He is able to hear Kuno responding though. Okay. Okay. I know. I know. Yes mommy. Okay. You promise. Really. Yippee. Oh. Yeah. I can tell her for you. Sure thing. I'll be right back. Issei feels his mat lifting a bit as Kuno leaves his side and out the door. She does this while skipping in excitement. As the little fox girl slides the door shut, Yusaka decides to relax her shoulder a bit as she didn't want to kill Issei from lack of oxygen. Looking down, Yusaka meets Issei's warm and brown eyes as his face is as pink as a lotus. Flower. Issei. We have a few things to talk about. Are you well enough to hear me out? Issei nods which causes Yusaka's assets to move alongside his cheeks. Yusaka nods and closes her eyes as she lays back in a more comfortable position while maintaining her hold on the team. I won't pretend to know what happened to you, but, I was able to feel your spirit, your essence, I was able to feel it being devoured. Knowing it was coming from you, I rushed into action. After all, it would break my daughter's heart if her hero was going to die. Then under the fox queen's breath, she mutters, it would break my heart as well. Issei is able to notice a change in the demeanor of this very kind woman, she looked as though she wanted to cry. 
Shaking off her feelings temporarily, Yusaka looks back down at Issei while forcing a smile that wouldn't look so sad. So, you see, I couldn't have very well just let you die. Not only would that be uncivilized, but it would also imply that I, Yusaka of Kyoto, am nothing more than an arrogant ruler who does not recognize valor and heroism. But to be perfectly honest with you, Yusaka's forced smile now turns into a very warm and loving one. The moment I saw you, when I came to from that spell, standing there with my daughter, I knew. I felt bad about wanting somebody so young, but then I found out what kinds of taste you have in women. Besides, my daughter can't stop talking about you, it's always Issei this and boob dragon that. What can I say, I guess I am what you would call a, fan. Oh my, Ada Ada, don't look at me like that, you will make an old woman blush. Issei is returning eye contact with Yusaka, he is doing this while maintaining a warm smile of his own. Damn, if she only knew how much I was perving her after the incident, guess this is a dream come true. Issei attempts to say something however Yusaka seems to get very nervous while tightening her shoulders which muffles Issei once again. Panning out, we see Issei being completely enveloped by Yusaka, all the way up to his neck and tails as he has a face full of newly escaped and exposed boobs. Chapter 5 Mirror to the Soul, Scene, Grigori, Just because I know things, well, that doesn't mean I know where Hyodo is. Believe me, I am as baffled as you are. And if you are thinking that I am hiding him somewhere, think again. We can see a large room which seemed to be created from black marble. Multiple computers and other scientific equipment could be seen, spread around the room. In the center, we can see a small set of couches where three people are sitting. Sirzex and Grafia are sitting on one of the couches. Grafia, who usually has a very stoic attitude, was now looking incredibly depressed as her gray eyes looked very glossy and bloodshot. Her pale colored hair was also looking out of place as if it weren't brushed out in days. Holding the sad maid, Sirzex didn't look much better. Her eyes had deep circles under them as her hair was simply tied back in a very tight ponytail. The two of them looked absolutely devastated. Well, to be honest, I was really hoping you were hiding him. At least I would know that he would be safe. The man who was sitting on the other couch simply nods with his eyes closed. Black hair with blonde tips. He was no other than the governor of the fallen angels, Azazel. So, was it really your sister? She tried to hurt him. Sirzex places a hand toward her face while burying her forehead into it. After a moment, she then nods silently. Azazel takes a deep breath. Well, as if we didn't have enough problems, Rias was the reason for Issei, injury and now the boy has been kidnapped. Sirzex, still with her face in her hand, nods again. Azazel nods and then pulls out a cigarette. With a smoke in his mouth, he begins to light it while speaking. So, two problems which need two separate answers in order to attempt to fix them. Right, okay, look ladies, I hate to preach the obvious here, but Rias has been acting pretty entitled as of late. I've noticed it, her peerage has noticed it, Issei, well, that's a mute point. Azazel takes a puff and blows a cloud of smoke out. I think our first and main priority should be Issei. We need to find out where he is and if he is in danger. With that, I will spend every spare resource I have in order to find the kid. I expect the two of you are doing the same. Grafia was the one to say something. We won't stop until we find him. Azazel nods while looking into the determined eyes of the maid. Well, then, I have a feeling this will all be very interesting, most interesting, where in the world is Issei Hyodo? Scene ORC. Shortly after Sirzex and Grafia left the old school, the peerage members decided to regroup back at the Hyodo home. Rias refused to move from her desk, even when Akino attempted to physically move her. They all wanted to talk, they all wanted to understand why Rias would do something as fucked up as trying to kill Issei. She wouldn't speak to them, not a word. Rather, she kept both of her hands over her head as she laid down on her desk. Finally, after almost an hour of attempting to convince her, the peerage left Rias to her own devices. After the door finally shuts, Rias stood up from her desk and looked toward the hallway that led to her other bedroom. Walking casually, as if nothing happened, Rias had a blank look on her face. She was not crying, nor did she look like she was, rather, she just carried on as if it were time to take an early nap. Stretching, 
Rias makes her way down the hallway and toward her room. Shutting her door, Rias looks in her mirror. He won't ever disappoint me again. Oh, no, I don't think he will. He deserved what he got. When I find him, he will apologize and then he will love me. If I am not satisfied with Issei's apology, then I will simply punish him again and again. Just like when I gave him those 1000 love taps to his behind. I really put in a lot of power for each and every strike. I almost felt a bit of vertigo afterwards, using all of that power, but I toughed it out and cosplayed shortly afterwards. All of you, Akino, Kaneko, Kiba, Gasper, Asia, Xenovia and I suppose Irina and Ravel, you don't even know the real me. Well, not yet, no more mistress nice girl. A reflection of Rias winks back at herself in the mirror. Well, it's been a long day. Yawn, I suppose I can sleep without my body pillow slave for a while. That is, until I find him, which I will, everything is going according to plan, yes, that's right, everything is just fine, it's perfectly splendid. Rias begins to remove her clothes as she crawls into a luxurious canopy bed, Issei, I promise, I will forgive you, in time. Unknown to Rias, her sister had a few of her surveillance team members stealthily bug the entire old school building with a plethora of sound equipment and cameras. They were able to do this while Sirzex was speaking with the peerage in the main room, while Rias was distracted by, guilt. Seen, Gregory, looking at a large monitor, Grafia, Sirzex and Azazel are all gasping at what they had just heard. Grafia was the first to say something. Rias Chan, when did you become so heartless and corrupt? Sears X has her head in both of her hands as we can see tears dropping toward the floor. Azazel has his mouth agape but then coughs shortly after while choking on his cigarette. F. Fuck me. Putting the cigarette out in an ashtray, Azazel stands up and looks as though he is going to be sick. There is no way that thing is Rias, at least, not the. Rias I've come to understand. I didn't think I could be fooled so easily. It's either because I am losing my mind along with old age, or she, she is a great fucking actress, like a 10 star one, whatever that means. Azazel then facepalms himself. Well, it's clear that something has to be done about your sister and I don't mean just therapy. Sears X raises her head and looks at Grafia as the maid uses one of her hands to clear the tears from her wife's face. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe for the next parts one god in my storage.